and how's it going everyone it's me it's count here with a brand new pokemon go video and in case you didn't know you could actually pick up shadow lugia by battling giovanni right now and it's actually quite an easy battle compared to the previous giovanni battles that we've had now i'm going to be telling you how you can defeat giovanni while he's holding a shadow lugia and i'm also going to be giving you my thoughts regarding this specific legendary shadow pokemon whether or not you should actually go for it or you should save those rocket radars or it's actually worth it and it's something you should definitely pick up i'll be going over all of that in today's video so let's roll the intro and jump right into it So let's jump right into it. First and foremost, if you want yourself a Shadow Legendary Pokemon, you will need to find and battle Giovanni, and you will be able to encounter the current Shadow Legendary Pokemon that's available. And as of right now, it is actually Shadow Lugia. Now, whether or not you think this one is worth going for, that's up to you, but I'll give my personal thoughts on that later in this video. But first and foremost, let's get into the brass text. So if you want yourself a Super Rocket Radar, right Right now you will have to complete the 15th step of the Misunderstood Mischief Special Research and doing so will award you with a Super Rocket Radar that will allow you to defeat Giovanni and pick up a Shadow Lugia. Now of course the Shadow Legendary is always rotating and there could be a Shadow Legendary that's going to be a lot more useful than Shadow Lugia that you will want to save that Super Rocket Radar for. Now just because you have a Super Rocket Radar does not necessarily mean you will come across Giovanni right away unless of course you wait for the rocket balloon if you do not want to go out and look for Giovanni and avoid all of the decoys then all you have to do is equip the super rocket radar and wait for the next team go rocket balloon it's going to be guaranteed to be Giovanni and this is something that not a lot of players are aware of so if you want to skip all of the fluff then definitely go by this method. Now another thing I always suggest is to wait for the specific weather boost. In this case with Shadow Lugia that means you will want to wait until it is windy weather. That is going to give you the better IVs but of course if you are looking for a PvP centric Pokemon then it is possible that a weather boost will not actually benefit you here. But when it comes to Lugia I would say that this is more of a raid damage dealer as well as a Master League Pokemon so you will want to go for the highest IVs possible which means you will want to wait until it is windy weather in your area and of course among all the weather boots windy weather is not really that common so unfortunately you might have to wait a long time here or you might just want to hold that super rocket radar for a future shadow legendary that will benefit from a common weather boost but yeah let's say you are going for shadow Lugia and you have the weather boost and you want to know what the ideal counters are. Well, Giovanni is going to bring a lot of familiar Pokemon, but also it's going to have some new Pokemon that's going to possibly give you a lot of trouble. First and foremost, Giovanni always opens up with Persian, and the most common counter to Persian is of course fighting types, but I would highly suggest you go with Lucario, mainly because Lucario does dish out a lot of damage and could eat out a lot of those shields, but also because Persian could have moves that are strong against your typical fighting types. So having a Lucario with that steel typing does give it a little bit more type coverage and that is something you should definitely consider. Open up your team with the highest level Lucario that you have and make sure it has Aura Sphere. That's going to allow you to completely melt down Persian and you should have no problem at all. And of course if you do not have a good Lucario you could always go with Conkeldor or Machamp. These are both very powerful fighters types and they could be very useful against Persian. It's all going to depend on what fast move and what charge move Persian has that you will want to avoid. Now the second Pokemon that Giovanni could potentially use is going to be either Kingler, Rhyperior, or 
Nidto King. Now for two of these, there is an ideal scenario where you can have one Pokemon deal with two of Giovanni's Pokemon. More specifically, if he has Rhyperior, then your fighting type is going to be strong against both Persian and Rhyperior. But of course, with Rhyperior, it does have ground type moves, which means the tip that I gave earlier regarding Lucario will actually be nullified because, well, Rhyperior is really strong against Steel types. So maybe you should go with a Conkeldor, that might be the better option so that you can handle both Persian and Rhyperior at the same time with just one Pokemon, and then you can have another fighting type be kind of like a backup. But if Giovanni is running Kingler, then you could just go with an electric type, and the electric type will be strong against both Kingler as well as with Shadow Lugia. This kind of makes me think that Giovanni this time around is actually one of the easiest compared to before, but yeah, it's just all going to depend on what Pokemon it has as its second Pokemon on how you should construct your team. Because the third Pokemon that he could potentially have is Nidoking, and it's also pretty straightforward. It is a poison type, so maybe you can have a psychic type in your arsenal, like a Mewtwo or some sort of Alkazam. It should be able to melt it down, but I highly suggest you try to get as many of the shields down as you can before you hop into Shadow Lugia, and something to keep Keep in mind is that Shadow Lugia may require two Pokemon to take down, so you want to have as much overlap as you possibly can. Maybe you can have a Mewtwo with Shadow Ball and Psy Strike, because of course Mewtwo can dish out all the damage that you need to take down Nidoking, and then it could have Shadow Ball to deal with Shadow Lugia. So yeah, let's move on to Shadow Lugia. So Shadow Lugia actually has a plethora of different weaknesses, as I'm sure you are familiar with if you've ever battled it in raid battles, you can go a lot of different avenues and still be able to take down this boss. The absolute best Pokemon, in my opinion, is going to be either Magnezone or Raikou, mainly because both of these Pokemon have Wild Charge and they also have Shadow Ball, or at least Raikou does. And with Magnezone, it might be the absolute best, mainly because it has that Steel Typing, which will allow you to resist a lot of Lugia's attacks. So that could be a good option for you to go down, but you could do no wrong with either of these electric types. You could even go with Electivire and still come out on top. Now, because Lugia is also a psychic type, you could also opt to go with a Pokemon like Weavile or Tyranitar. Both of these Pokemon can dish out a lot of damage and resist a lot of Lugia's moves. There's just a lot of different avenues you can go, and it's just really great that you can have a lot of fluidity with the team that you bring. Now, when it comes to Shadow Lugia, is this a Shadow Legend? that is worth going after? Well, honestly, I do believe so. Like for myself, I would actually spend a Super Rocket Radar on catching a Shadow Lugia, mainly because there is a lot of potential with its psychic and flying typing. If you are able to remove frustration, then I highly suggest maybe possibly going for an Elite Charge TM to use on Shadow Lugia so that you can get some really nice flying type attacks. That could make it one of the best flying type attackers in the game. And of course, as a psychic type, you will not want to ignore it as well. Considering that it has some really beefy stats, it should be able to last a little bit longer in raid battles compared to other glass cannons that are psychic types, but at the same time, it could dish out a lot of damage thanks to the shadow damage bonus. So overall, I personally think it is worth going after Shadow Lugia. It's certainly in a top tier compared to all of the other shadow legendaries. It may not necessarily be as good as Shadow Moltres or Shadow Articuno, or even Shadow Mewtwo, but it's definitely going to be better than some of the other Shadow Legendaries we've had. And of course, because it is iconic, it is the first Shadow Legendary that was ever introduced into the Pokemon franchise. I really do think because of that factor alone, you will want to have at least one of them in your collection. And I did say this in a previous video, but it is kind of a shame that they did not go with the Gale of Darkness model of Shadow Lugia, but who knows, maybe in the future they will, and the only way for you to get that model is to have a Shadow Lugia to begin with. So yeah, there is that to keep in mind. I'm not saying that Niantic will eventually release that Gale of Darkness model, but it is a possibility that you will not want to miss out on. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, 
make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And let me know in the comment section below if you got yourself a Shadow Lugia and what IVs it ended up having. So yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm Kanjinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.